your message, God, like only you have given. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. Y'all know me, I'm totally untalkable, okay? I like to talk. I talk a lot. I'm sorry. Okay? Sorry in advance, not sorry. Um, God has been giving me a word. And the first thing I can say is, all I heard God say all week long was, trust me. He needs his people in this season. Trust him. You got to understand, no matter what you go through, no matter what you're going through, God is still ever present. He hasn't left you. He sounds like he's on mute. You know, sometimes when your phone goes on mute, you don't think they're there, but they're still there. God is still right there. So that's the first message you get to give to his people. Before we even get started, was to trust him. Now, the topic of message is give God something to work with. So if you trust God and you say you trust God, you got to give him something to work with. Not saying you're perfect, because none of us are perfect, but I love in our, in our message that Bishop has given us in our ministry class that we're faithful, but not perfect. So we want to give God a little something to work with. It don't matter your flaws. It don't matter your fears. It don't matter what you're trying to do. I can hear God say, get out of my business. Get out of my way. If you gave it to me, I don't need you to pick it back up. Because when you pick it back up, that means you're telling me you don't trust me for what you gave me. So if you want to be healed, how are you going to go to the roof doctor? You're going to go to the terrorist people. You want all kind of things to say, oh God, this is going to help me. Somebody say, oh, well, this will help you do some. I know the old people say, get that Epsom salt bath going. Right. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, you better learn to get on your knees and pray. And tell God, help me where I'm weak. Help me where I need healing, where I need deliverance, where I need peace. Because this whole nation at this point need a peace of mind. Right. I know God has given it in me to come in. And do what he's big and bad enough to do. And y'all, he's doing just that. Parents are killing each other, killing kids, kids killing each other. There's so many things that are happening. People committing suicide because it's too much. But one thing I will say is what they're forgetting is God Almighty. God said the enemy can come and do whatever he wants to do. I have to give him authority. I have to give him permission. Remember, That's right. he has no power because he has to have permission to do anything. I don't care if it's even to look at you. Because he got to look at you and be like, hmm, I think I can, I can do this for her. She weak in this area, so I can come to her and I can do this. But you got to remember, God had to give him what? Permission. So now God says, since the devil at this point has come in to do what he was big and bad enough to do, because he's raising up this season and in this nation people that's willing to say God I'm going to do your will mm -hmm. not mine mm -hmm. I'm willing to not shine above the rest mm -hmm. I don't need a fancy car the fancy houses and the jewelry I don't need a title and I don't need a name for myself as long as you're getting the glory right. so therefore I need y'all to understand you got to give God something to work with to be behind in the world, I'm supposed to give God something to work with. How am I supposed to do that? Say yes. Believe. Trust Him. That's all you got to do. Say yes. Because guess what? Your first yes, He always remembered. He never go back on that first yes. I don't care how you say when you was a little child and you got saved and you didn't know what you was doing. You didn't think you know what you was doing. My God. But you felt that spirit. You felt that anointing to know. Yes. Yes, God. I want some of that. I like the way that feels. I want more of it. So I don't care when you did it when you were six, you was three. Amen, my baby. She coming up. She done said yes. It's in her blood. <laughs> so whenever you told God yes, he don't 
go back on it. So therefore, like I said, when you did it when you was young and you got grown and thought you big, you knew what you was doing in this world, you go out and drink and party and do whatever you thought you was big enough to do. That's okay. That's why God got you covered. That's why you didn't get in some of the mess that you were supposed to get in. That's why you didn't get killed when you was out there in the club twerking and turning it up and they were shooting up the club. You don't understand how I got out of there because you said yes. So therefore you was covered. So now you come back and say, but Lord, I'm sorry. Help me to make myself right with you. I want to get back in place and what God said, come home. Come back. And it's okay, I'm not judging you. I'm not going to kick you out. I'm not going to talk about you. I'm not going to talk behind your back. I'm not going to gossip about you. Just come. And I'll put you right back where you started. Where you, where, where you left off is where you're going to start back again. He's not going to push you back in the dirt. He's not, he's, he don't have to do all that. He said, because when you are made righteous with me, I am righteous with you. So get back in place. Tell God yes. That's all he wants is a yes. Forgive me. Forgive me, God. So my, my questions I have for you, what is hold, what are you holding on to that you can't get back to God? What fear? Some people can cuss at God. I mean, some people had a type of relationship, you know, where they be like, God, I just don't, you just, I mean, he's the problem. You got to understand, we make God the problem. But he's never changed. He never moves. But he's the, the problem. So we got to blame somebody. I ain't going to blame myself. So what are you holding on to that's keeping you from saying yes to God and getting back to God where you need? What is distracting you? Is it your job? Is it your finances? Are you worried about your family? Are you worried about how, how it's going to look? I used to be the black, the black of the party. I'm turning up for Jesus, so are you worried about how it's going to look? But what is it? What is keeping you from giving it all to God? Everything that you're worried about, everything that you're praying about, everything that you're fasting about, don't let it be in vain. Because you're so worried. God can't hear your word. He don't worry about your word. He worry about your friends. Your worry don't move him. Your tears don't move him. I'm sorry y'all to tell you, but your depression don't move God. It's your praise that moves God. That's where your deliverance is. In your praise. Because if God said, I'm almighty and I can do all things but fail, why am I going to sit here and worry about why you depressed? I know why you depressed. Right. But I didn't give that to you. Okay. I didn't put that burden on you. You, you want to help your family. We want everybody to rise to the top with us. You can't take them all with you. So that's not my issue. You done made another issue for yourself. I didn't give you that. What makes you pick it back up? You pray to God, Lord, I want you to bless my finances. What makes you pick it back up? Spirit of fear. Oh, that light, the lights about to get turned off. God, you said, they said tomorrow, they coming to turn them things off. And you get fearful, so now, again, back to my old message, you run to everybody else. And nobody can be there for you. Nobody ain't got the extra cash. I'm always there for y'all. When you need me, I'm always giving my very last penny. But y'all won't help me. Why? One, you're a child of God. Two, you said yes. And three, he said if my children that are called by my name will humble themselves, you will hear from me. Because you're picking it back up. You, you're picking back all that stress up. You told God, you can't do that for me. I can figure it out on my own. But until you say, God, I will trust you. Let them turn the lights off. Turn the lights off. God will give me that extra money to turn them right back on. <laughs> will he not give you overflow this year? Turn them on. Because the very, very thing the enemy wants you to do is fear. God said, fear not, but I am with you. Don't fear nothing. Turn the lights off. Turn the water off. He will give you overflow to turn them back on and keep them on. But it's by your faith. It's by you trusting God. It's that no matter what I go through, I will trust you. I don't care if they give
give you a bad report at the doctor. There's nothing too hard for God. That's right. I don't care if they don't say you got cancer, you don't got this, and you don't got that. If you trust me, that's all God needs. Y'all, it seems so, I promise you, it seems so simple, but that's the hardest thing for us to do. <laughs> it's to trust God. God said it's too hard for you, but not me. I just I just oh. gave a, a word to a young lady at my job. I think it was Friday. I had to call my sister. I, I had to call her because God showed up and showed off, y'all. This lady, I need to use the restroom. Ma'am, you came all the way to the second floor to use the bathroom? We ain't got no public restrooms in here. This is the hospital I work at. The we don't have no public restrooms. At least the customer service people would have let you use the restroom. But this lady had to particularly come for me. That's right. Oh. All right, Lord, here you go. And I mean, in my spirit all that morning, I mean, God was dealing with me all that morning. And I kept hearing the Love Adam song. I heard Tasha Cobb's song. He was just showing out, y'all. And I was like, God, this is not my spirit. Like, it was like a, a not a word racial spirit. It was just like an anxious spirit. Like, somebody's just anxious. I'm like, God, what? I was fine coming to work. You know, I was ready to get everybody hyped. I'm the hot man in the morning. No, it's 6 30 in the morning. Everybody like TV is too early. Y'all, I done had my Jesus in me. Y'all go get y'all coffee. But I done got worked up before I get to work every morning. You understand? Right. So the lady came and she used the restroom. I said, We don't have public restroom, but I'll let you use the restroom. So I took her back and she came back. The lady literally just put her hand on my desk like this. I said, Ma'am, I don't know what you going through, honey. <laughs> I said, God, here you go. My mouth. I'm that Lord, ma'am, I don't know what you're going through. But God has already worked it out. It's by your faith that he's already worked whatever it is out. So she went through her little spew about, you know, her child went to college without having to pay a dime of university, understand, without paying a dime. She had no money. They, she's struggling with a, her marriage. She's struggling with the kids. It's like everything on her. And God told her to get up one morning. She was. She said, I woke up sick. Like my stomach was just in so much pain. I couldn't touch my own stomach. She said, I just was in pain. And she said, God woke me up and told me to go to the hospital. She said, usually I had to get the kids ready for school. I had to get this lunch ready for my husband. She had so much to do for everybody else. But she got up and she went to the hospital. She said, I had three things wrong with me. I said, the Bible, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, what else? Let's keep going. What, what, what? Go, go ahead. Go ahead and get it out. You, honestly, God sent you to me to get it out. So then, like I said, she was staring by her husband and her child went to school. And she didn't have to pay a dime. I said, okay, because God don't need your bank account. Uh -huh. All right now. He had his own bank account. Your bank account can't amount to what God has. She said, and the Lord, she showed off in, in the lobby area, y'all. I, I said, I couldn't, I couldn't stop her at that point. It was too late to stop what God had already stopped. I said, Lord, I'm here fine, but don't cut Jesus. But he done did what he had to do. So therefore, I said, God don't need your bank account. Never have and never will. I said, what else? She said, Lord, my husband just don't seem to understand. He don't want to help me. It's all about him. You know, men sometimes, sorry, D, men sometimes can be babies, okay? They can act like your children too, okay? That's just what it is. They get sick, they sicker than you ever. Like y'all both can be sick and they sicker than you. But, and I said, ma'am, I said, the only thing you gotta do to save it, not only yourself, but your household, is give them to God. Give the husband, give the children, give the bills, everything that you're going through. Give it to God. She called me some name, Maddie, something. I don't know. She said it was a grandma. She said that was just confirmation because my grandma just told me that and you don't even know me and I don't know you. I said, well, amen. God sent you to the right place. Amen. amen. Give them Lord to God. Anything that you're stressed about, anything that you wrote on your paper that you want God to do for you, give it to God. Y'all got to sometimes leave that stuff behind. Because it works. It stresses you. You got to sometimes put that stuff on the back burner and put self first. Right. Because when God deal with you, right. he deal with self. Because right. if I get self right, right. all things will be right. added unto That's me. Right. That's right. Leave it behind. It ain't like you say, I don't care about you. That's not what it is. But I need to commune with God right now. I need to hear from God right now. I, God got some things for me to do. And guess what? He'll bless your whole household if you would obey and pay attention. Amen. I can't bless you if you don't give me nothing to work with. All right now. 
You better say that out loud. Yes, sir. <laughs> you better give God something to work with. He needs your time. And I know sometimes we're married people. I understand single people. Trust me, that's the. I hate to say it, but God loves single people because guess what? It's one on one. When when I tell you to move, you move. When I tell you to go, you go. But when you're married, God honors marriage. So when he honor marriage, he said, I need to make sure, you need to make sure your house is right first. Okay. I need you to get home right first. Because if home ain't right, uh -oh. you and I, we got to disconnect. We got to disconnect. That means, hey, I got to give it how you give it. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to make sure home is okay. I need you to make sure home is safe and secure. Because sometimes if I have to send you by yourself, how that song say, Bishop, send me, I'll go. Even if I have to go by myself, God sometimes will have to send you by yourself even when you're married. So I need to make sure home is secure. So that thing outside ain't looking better than what you thought it was. So that, so that temptation ain't standing just a little bit, you know. I ain't going to tell. You better say it. Come on, So God said, I need you to make sure home is secure. How they say, don't let nobody feed your mate. That's right. Only people feed them is my mother-in-law. Hello. My mother-in-law better cook for it. I trust my sisters in Christ. I'm getting together soon. I heard it food good. Amen, amen. You can't let everybody feed your mate. That's what my grandma used to tell me. You better go home and cook for that girl, y'all. Just mind you, my grandma, 86 years old. You know, them people back in the day ain't don't. Same said, you go with a woman? What? My grandma said, you better go home and cook for that girl. You better go home and feed her. I said, grandma, I'll cook some spaghetti unless you got something else for her. <laughs> but she loved my spaghetti, amen. amen. <laughs> so I just want you to know to trust God with all that you have. With the distractions, y'all trust God. I want to read 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 too. It said, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it, meaning endure all the distractions. How is your way of escape? Lord, I need you. Lord, help me. My flesh. My eyes is seeing something, God. And I need your help. Y'all, we just human. Amen. Ain't nobody perfect. I don't care. Keep it down there. Bishop, I'm sorry, Bishop. But some done looked at you. Amen. I'm pretty sure you don't see something. It's that Karen. Karen, 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 Karen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Hey. 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 When, when you raise up in Christ, he don't make ugly people. I'm just, I'm here to tell you. They are beautified for his glory. Amen. Amen. So you'll see a light shining. You'll be like, whoa. Nope. Uh-uh. That ain't my light. Amen. That one don't belong to me. Amen. Touch Every not. Day. That's right. Yeah. Come on. Touch <laughs> not. <laughs> Touch not, men and women of God. If it don't belong to you, keep your hands to your sins. Amen. And your mind. And I was about to go that bit. You better stay, Deacon. And keep your mind stayed on Jesus. All right. That's it. Because I'm telling you, if God said, if you think it, you right. might as well do it. Exactly. Right. That part. If you think it, you might as well do it. So as soon as that thought comes, you're like, what? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> 45 times. Come on, come on. <laughs> and I'll forgive you just as me. Amen. I ain't joking. Amen. I'm with you. I'm with you. The enemy wants, the enemy don't want you to hold yourself accountable, y'all. I got this 3 o'clock this morning. The enemy don't want you to hold yourself accountable. But God needs you to be accountable because he is accommodating to all your issues. Flaws, setbacks, turnbacks, weaknesses, that he may be your strength your peace and love. He is trying to be to you what no one else could ever, ever be to you. Not only that God get the glory, of course he gets the glory. He's due the glory, of course. But flesh-wise, but that 
that you understand that he wants you to trust him and know that he is greater than anything you've been through, going through, and will ever go through. That was a message 3 o'clock this morning. I said, God, I said, God I'm going to sleep because I got to get up. He said, no, I need you to hear what I'm trying to tell you. Y'all, people are going through so many things that, I mean, right. y'all, people are dying, people, kids are getting killed. I mean, people are going through some heart-wrenching things. And we got to understand that God is all things he can say. Trust me. No matter what you see, no matter what you feel, we get emotional sometimes. We get lost in our emotions. I heard that song a long time ago. We get lost in our emotions. But you better get out the way and just trust him. Because he said, I'll be your peace, I'll be your shield, and I'll be your heart. Yes. Now, I do, I do have an example for you. I do have my little demonstration. I think it's a Leo thing with demonstrations. That's okay. That's okay. Nikki, I want you to put me up for a second. I'm going to show you how God works and how the enemy works. I'm going to show you. Nikki, which bag look good? You all want you to look at them. Just which one look good? Yeah, that pretty. Yeah, yeah, don't that look good? I'm right, so pick it. That bag look good. Pick, pick this bag. Pick that bag. My uncle, hold it. I need you to hold that bag. Hold it now. Hold it. So when you pick up a beautiful bag like this, only thing I heard God say, that when God bless you, is it heavy? When God give you a blessing, is it heavy? Is it burdensome? No. Okay. Okay. That's what I need. Whatever you may say, I want you to take the heavy bag. Just hold that bag. Now, when you have a heavy bag like that, if God didn't give it to you, get it to you. So I'm going to pull this right here out of the side. And what the enemy wants you to do, I think, y'all, how am I going to try to be What the enemy wants you to do now. This is what he wants you to do.
do it, I need to make sure that I'm well equipped to say, God, I trust you. I'm going to do it. I'm sorry. I didn't have enough time. I'm about to be 40 years old. I didn't have enough time That's to right. do everything else and play around, y'all. Life is too short. That's, That's right. right. People younger than me leaving here. People my age leaving here. I done got 11 class members that done passed away. Not for mainly sicknesses, but they gone. That's right. And did you do what I called you to do? I don't want to be disobedient. And he said, depart from me. You have not done nothing I told you. Listen to all them fools out there that thought they had it right and knew what they was doing. They ain't no evil. They lost too. I don't want, I don't want, to, I don't want to live like that. I don't want to have to go and look at God and be like, God, oh Lord, here he go. No, I want to say, I'll take my car. All right. Yeah. 